بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد at this point in time or whenever in the future the bottom line is in every avenue in every facet of life wherever whenever however we need Allah this yaqeen and azat of Allah benefit is from Allah harm is from Allah good is from Allah bad is from Allah all conditions are from Allah everything every matter every situation we need to hand over to Allah in the world based on a person's portfolio do we value them and do we know their power we know the power of a street sweeper we won't have him on speed dial the person who cleans the refuse and removes the refuse we don't have them on speed dial maybe a friend on speed dial because he'll be there when we need him maybe a police officer at the time of emergency maybe the ambulance at the time of necessity based on each person's portfolio somebody has the president of the country as his friend and his god card blanche at any given time if you have any necessity give me a call because one has yaqeen that he is the president he has the power he has the backing it is about the yaqeen if an imposter comes and says i am the president you all turn to him why because we don't have the yaqeen and believe that what this person is saying they can do but allah jalla jalalu the five qualities allah is genuine he has the sifat allah is unique there's none like him but the last point even though all four are there if we don't know the value of allah we will not appreciate allah and we will not turn to allah like a person who has a very rare diamond but just thinks it to be a stone he will not value it at all now that we have the number istainu bi sabri wa salah again turn to allah in any situation the first place where your heart goes to is qul ila that's why imam suyuti is written in his kitab jami sagheer riwayat naja awwal hadhihi al ummah bil yaqeen wa zuhd that the first part of this ummah sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in was saved because of the yaqeen and the zat of allah and zuhud abstinence when a person has it you know let me say these go hand in hand when a person has yaqeen and the zat of allah then he will not indulge he will not break the command of allah because he has yaqeen that my allah is watching me and the last part of this ummah bil bukhli wal amal the last part of this ummah was destroyed because of their stinginess and their hopes and expectations from dunya if if you have yaqeen in the zat of allah you won't have yaqeen in dunya you won't have any desire any ambition for anything of dunya there was a pious king and for a while you were searching for his good son in law and on his travels he came across a village and a youngster who he noticed to be very pious muttaqi and in his heart he came that this is an ideal boy for my daughter she was a princess but when you got akhirat in mind and you don't look at dunya so he was a balija he was a dihati he was a farmer he was a bedouin he had no wealth he was poor all the criteria for the people who look at dunya was not there but he was a person of akhirat so he concentrated on that he seen sifat in this person so he proposed to the boy to say will you marry my daughter will you accept 
the proposal, the youngster said, I don't mind accepting the proposal, except for I fear that you will not manage the difficulty as she grew up in the lack of luxury. So the king said, don't worry about that. So Nika took place and the bride goes to the boy's house. It is iftar time and he's breaking his fast. He takes a few dry pieces of bread, roti, khubz, and he eats the dry pieces of bread. There are a few left over and he puts it away for storage. The bride asked him, Oh my beloved husband, what is that you've put away? So he said, I've been fasting the entire day and whatever little bit I could scrape up, this is the leftover from my iftar. And I will keep that for my tomorrow's fast. So the girl said, I need to go back to my father's house. So he said, I knew from the first day that a princess will not have the sabr and the patience to love with me based on my sacrifices. She smiled and she said, it's not your sacrifices and your difficult life that I'm worried about that has perplexed me. My concern is greater that you have kept some bread aside for tomorrow and your yaqeen is that you need to keep some left over for tomorrow. You are not ready to have some yaqeen and tawakkul in Allah that Allah will look after you. I don't think so. My father had made a right choice in choosing you as a husband. Your yaqeen is not on the level that I think. So we need to check ourselves, we need to introspect and see at any given time, whatever the situation is, where does my heart go first to? And then what is ila? On the very occasion when you have a need, where does your heart go to first? And ulama have explained ila is of two types. The one is the natural, uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one is the unnatural, which is man-made if we can call it. The natural is of two types. One is which we cannot comprehend, we don't have any connection with, but we can perceive it. For example, the sun. Ibrahim alayhi salam, falamma janna alayhi laylu ra'a kawkaba, wala hadha rabbi. So Ibrahim والسلام, to dispel the yaqeen of the idol worshippers at the time drew a similitude and he first started the stars disappeared then the moon disappeared and eventually shams, and then the sun so these are creations of Allah, but these creations people worship, they made it an ilah. Second, from the natural ilahs, there are three types. One is which is a creation, for example, fire. Man can make fire, but he worships the fire. Or, for example, people have made cows, their idols, their forms of worship. So, that also is a creation of Allah. It is not man-made, but people worship it. The second one is nafs. Afaraita mani tagadha ilahahu hawa. The demands, nafs, his ambition, his desire becomes an ilah. So a person himself can become a god where he thinks so, Anna Rabbukum ala. He himself, because of his ambitions, he makes himself god. Or thirdly, shaitan. La ta'budush, la ta'budish shaitan, innahu lakum adum mubin. 
that people make shaitan they go. These are the natural idas. And then you have the man-made idas. The first one is got to do with the sifat of Allah of Razzaq. And the second one is the sifat of Allah and Nafi and Dawah. So Razzaq, for example, this people have made wealth, Deila. So one person came to the one Buzruk, he said, I've got this problem, I've got this problem, I've got this problem here. The Buzruk said, go to the temple and make a sajda to that idol. So he said, astaghfirullah, how can I make sajda to that idol? So the Buzruk said, okay, come to me after three days. The person returned after three days. The Buzruk gave him some gold coins. He said, my problems are solved. I don't know how to thank you enough. The Buzuk said, you should rather make sajda to that idol. Because that temple which I told you to go worship that idol, I purchased that idol, it was made of gold. I just melted it and made it into coins. There you are physically making sajda. Now you are realistically making sajda to those gold coins. Wealth has become an ilah. Somebody is traveling somewhere. So we tell him, okay, you're going to a foreign country. If you have a problem, what will you do? So he says, no, I got credit cards. So what if your credit card gets stolen? He said, no, I'll carry traveler's checks as well. What if your traveler's check gets stolen also? I'll get somebody to send money for me on Western Union. So uh, what if Western Union for some reason, businesses are closed? He said, I'll try to see that some people in that country, some family, some relatives. What if you can't get hold of those relatives? Allah That's our last answer. Allah then Allah will solve my problems. Allah will help me. So we've always made Allah last. Businesses, it has become an ilah. A jamaat went to one business, they gave him dawah, they said, come for us, with us to the masjid for salah. I said, no, I'm busy. The misaf said, the shop is controlling you, you're not controlling the shop. He said, what are you talking about, the misaf? And he left. They went for Asr Salat, Amisab came back, he said, did you make it for Asr Salat? He said, no. He said, why? He said, I was very busy in the shop. He said, I told you, the shop is controlling you. If you were controlling the shop, you would have closed your business and went to the masjid and followed the Amr of Allah. Hey, al-salah, hey, al-falah. But you think so success is in your business? You've made your business your ilah, now your business is controlling you. Likewise, somebody has made a profession, a business. That is result. And benefit and harm is an ilah, the sifat of Allah, where people have made medicine and ilah. That in any given time, when you have a problem, take a tablet, go to the doctor. We are not saying don't do that. But at the first given instance, where does your heart go to? Somebody, the child was sick, so they went to a normal GP. GP said, you know what, situation is very uh, serious. You need more equipment. I suggest you go to this laboratory and do tests. They do the test in a laboratory. The lab says, you know what, it looks serious. I think so you need to go to a specialist. They go to the specialist. He analyzes the data and says, you know what, it looks very serious. But I think so you should get a, a second opinion of a senior doctor. He walks into the office. The senior doctor looks at the results and says, that medically there is no solution. Your son has so many months to live. As he's walking out of the surgery, he tells his son, oh my son, we've got Allah. We've got Allah. So we went to the GP, we went to the laboratories, we went to the surgeons, we went to the specialists. And at the end, we left it for Allah. So medicine is saying we can give life, we can bring dead people alive. If you've got pain, we can remove the pain. Science is saying when there's no rain, we can bring rain. When there's no crops, we can create crops. We can do this, we can do this, we can do this. We can find a vaccine, we can find a cure. We can use a ventilator to keep you alive. We, we, we can do this. These are all ilas. 
at any given point in time, a believer's heart should go, should go to Allah. And that's why we should constantly make the dua. Number one, most important thing, for this yaqeen, for this tawakkul, we need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet says, Sallallahu al-Afa wal-Afiyah, فَإِنَّ أَحَدًا لَمْ يُطَى بَعْدَ الْيَقِينِ خَيْرًا مِنَ الْعَافِيَةِ That after afiyat, the first, strongest, best, most important dua is the dua of yaqeen. Allahumma inni as'aluka a'mal ahla al-yaqeen. Allahumma inni as'aluka a'mal ahli al-yaqeen. Oh Allah, I am asking you the amal of the people of Yaqeen. That when a person has his Yaqeen, how is amal is? Allahumma inni as'aluka Yaqeen and Sadiqah. Ya Allah, give me that Yaqeen, the pure Yaqeen. Allahumma a'atini imanan la yartad. Wa Yaqeenan laysa ba'dahu kufr. Oh Allah, give me such an iman that will make me die with iman. And Ya Allah, give me such yaqeen that I will not turn to kufr. These are all masnuna du'as. Allahumma qsim lana min khashashika. O Allah, give us such fear that will ma tahulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asik. That between us committing sins, it will cause a barrier. Wa min ta'atika ma tuballikuna bihi jannatak. And such obedience that will take us to jannah. وَمِنَ الْيَقِينِ مَا تُهَوِّنُ بِهِ عَلَيْنَا مَسَائِبَ الدُّنْيَا Ya Allah, give us such a yaqeen that even difficulties and hardships and calamities that we face, this yaqeen will take us through that situation. May Allah subhanahu ta'ala give us to speak of acquiring that yaqeen. كاملة صادقة وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين